But first up, he's a neuroscientist, author, and atheist whose new book is Science and the Soul, Selected Writings of a Passionate Rationalist. I am proud to call him my friend, Richard Dawkins. <laughs> hey, Richard. How are you, Professor? Great to see you. Oh, of course. All right, first of all, I have to tell you, I love the title of this book, Science in the Soul, because, you know, it makes you go, what? Well, that's the point. Yes. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. So tell us what you, why you put soul in a book from such a famous rationalist and scientist. Well, obviously, I don't mean soul in the sense of immortal soul. Soul... Well, we're Americans. Nothing's yeah. obvious. <laughs> Soul is the is the catch in the throat when you look up at the Milky Way. It's the yeah. it's the swelling in the chest that you get when you listen to a Schubert quartet or read a Shakespeare sonnet. I'm fed up with religion hijacking the soul in this sense. Yeah. They sometimes say to me, "You're an atheist. How can you appreciate Beethoven? As though it has anything to do with it." <laughs> really? That's what people. I've say. had that. Yes. That's ridiculous. Well, I know people say to me all the time, "Why can't we reconcile science and faith?" And uh, you know, we went through this with George Bush when he said we should teach evolution as well as creationism side yes. by side. But teach you, the controversy. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> right. That's what they call it. You, you really can't have have it both ways, can you? Faith is the very opposite of science. Faith is belief in something without evidence. Right. Science. In, insists all the time on evidence. It's based upon evidence, logical reasoning from evidence. Faith and science are completely incompatible. You, you think that would be non-controversial, but uh, I, I know throughout history you have people who don't care for science, don't believe in science, have no use for it. It seems like nowadays it's seen as something that is actually threatening. People are, are literally hostile to it. Well, very much so, and, and you see this in the climate change uh, debate, sure. for example, yeah. and you see various... Trump is very Catholic churchy. <laughs> various um, intellectuals who are more or less anti-science and, and extolling the virtues of personal opinion, subjective opinion, as opposed to objective truth. And that's been giving, being given a sort of stamp of, of approval by some academic disciplines. Yeah, I, I know you are fighting this with something, I think it's called the Teacher Institute for Evolutionary Science. Yes. You, you actually are teaching people how to go into schools and teach evolutionary Well, that's right. Uh, um, it's, it's run by a marvelous woman called Bertha Vasquez in, in Florida, who is a teacher. And the, the, the rationale is that middle school teachers uh, have to teach science and they can teach other parts of science. But when it comes to evolution, they meet hostility from parents, from children, and so they don't dare do it. And so they need to be taught how to teach evolution. So what Bertha does is to run workshops for middle school teachers and prime them, arm them, with how to teach evolution, how to answer the various ridiculous objections that they're going to meet, for example. But when you meet ridiculous objections, they come from ridiculous people. And I know. I, I, and I don't... I, I've never seen a case where logic swayed them. No, but um, these... these, these... <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> I, want, I once got into trouble, and in, indeed I was sued for $51 million for saying that people who don't believe in evolution are either ignorant, stupid, or insane. <laughs> now, that was taken as an insult, but actually, of course, it's a simple statement of fact. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, really, it really is, uh, because by far the most important member of that <laughs> little trilogy is ignorant. Right. We're all ignorant of something. We're all ignorant of... We're all ignorant of most things. We're all ignorant of most things. I'm certainly ignorant of baseball. Uh, and it's something that I would like to remedy, and, right. and somebody can tell me about it. I could. So, <laughs> these Let's people... start with the infield fly rule. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, another one of your projects, I know you rescue bloggers, secular bloggers. This is mostly... Yes, this Islamic is something countries. done by the Center for Inquiry, which is the, the organization sure. that my foundation has just merged with. It's called Secular Rescue. And uh, there are a number of people in mostly Islamic countries who are in danger of their lives because they are blogging secularism, free-thinking, atheism. Bangladesh, Pakistan, places like that. And what the Secular Rescue Program does 
is we don't actually do a Scarlet Pimpernel. We don't go rushing in with sort of chariots and seize them. Um, <laughs> But we do provide money and we do provide documents and find them places to go in Europe or America. Uh, and and that's rescued. something that's actually happening. I mean, that's yes. something that we can't, uh, people can't argue with. Uh, there is an underground railroad, basically, yes. what you're yeah. providing here for people who just want to blog about secular thoughts in the Muslim world. Yes. And yet you, like I, was disinvited for an event. We have at, that in common. Yes, we do, we do. At, <laughs> at, Our uh, badge of honor. At, at, the, at the school that, that 50 years ago ha, uh, was known most for free speech, free Berkeley. Speech. Yes. Now, it, it was. <laughs> let's not get into that. I don't know whether he's for us or against us. Let's not ask. <laughs> Uh, but the, I don't want to give them too much publicity because they don't deserve it, but a radio station, yep. you were going to do an interview to promote your book, and uh, I won't name them, they don't deserve it, they're horrible. Mm -hmm. But here's what they said, uh, we cancelled the book event. We didn't know that Hugh had offended and hurt in his tweets and other comments on Islam so many people. We don't endorse hurtful speech. We emphatically support serious free speech. Obviously, fucking not. <laughs> but we do not support abusive speech. They don't know what the word abusive means. No. And obviously, they don't understand the concept that sometimes the truth hurts. What is In a university going of all places, yes. And not the only one in this country that's going crazy no, that's like right. this. It's, a, it's, a, it's an epidemic that's going on of... of, of people running scared from open speech, running scared of anybody who might come along and say something that poor little Diddums is find offensive. <laughs> what do they think a university is for? I know. Uh, yeah. so, so what is the... <laughs> how are we going to shovel our way out of this mess? Because these are the people who are on our side. That's the problem. That's what I wanted to say. Um, I think that the, this radio station and these universities, they're on our side, we're on their side. Now, I was deplatformed specifically because of what I, what I was alleged to have said about Islam. I think that the, the, the reason they did it was probably a laudable motive. They are on the side of oppressed minorities. They think that Muslims are an oppressed minority, oppressed by people like us. Actually, of course, Muslims are oppressed by Islam. Exactly. That's, the point. That's right. Yes. And criticism of a religion is not the same thing as bigotry. Of course it's not. You know, I went through this with the Catholic Church 10 years ago. They wanted to throw me off television, and they were like, you're anti-Catholic. I'm not anti-Catholic, I'm anti-child fucking. Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna point out who's guilty of that. And That's, I'm, I'm not... I'm not Islamophobic, no. I'm anti-keeping women instead of second-class citizens. Exactly, and throwing gay people off buildings. Yes, and, 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 and of course, we're not saying they all do that. No. But and the it, ones who, who don't are being persecuted by the ones who do. That's where the persecution comes from. Okay. So that these people have identified the wrong victims of persecution. Right. It's laudable that they're on the side of people who are victims of persecution, but they've got the wrong persecutors. You know why? No one reads a newspaper anymore. No, that's If right. it doesn't come through... Least of all the president. ...on your... <laughs> 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 all right, what a great way to end. Richard Dawkins, thank you very much. I love you, sir. I appreciate you coming by. Richard Dawkins, get his new book.